The Naruto series is home to some of anime and manga's most iconic villains of all time. From the sophisticated ideology of pain to the long-awaited reveal of Madara Uchiha. But that's not to say that there's not a handful of villains out there better left alone. And there's one in particular which I've got to talk about today and that is Urashiki Otsutsuki. Listen. I just want to make this clear before people label me as one, but I'm not a Boruto hater, okay? In fact, I've probably got nearly, if not, over 100 videos on the damn series over the years. I watch it every week and I read it every month. So to label this as blind hatred for the series is just completely inaccurate, okay? In fact, the arc I'm going to be discussing in this very video just so happens to be most actual haters favourite arc, and that is the Urashiki arc, or as it's better known as, the Time Slip arc. But before we jump ahead into that arc, let's rewind back to Urashiki's introduction, and actually the arc which made me place him in my top two favourite characters in the whole series at the time. The tuning exams. Urashiki was an anomaly here because he was not in the movie release of this arc, even though he was originally planned to be, and he wasn't in the manga version either. Meaning he was a brand new addition to a storyline most fans had already been made familiar with before. Admittedly, this did limit what the writers could do with this character, or so we thought. His impact was probably larger than most would have ever expected as I'd say 90% of the community expected him to die before the arc was even over to keep his impact minimal, yet he lived. So what I want to do is take a look at the journey of his character in this arc to see just what it was that made Urashiki such a fan favourite character full of great potential. We meet him and discover that he isn't quite like the other two, Momoshiki and Kinshiki. Unlike them, he's not as serious, and in actuality he's incredibly sarcastic and carefree in comparison, jokingly referring to Momoshiki as his... Momoshiki-senpai! But... We also see more of a serious side to him, and that he does still follow the clan rules as he opts to freeze Toneri Otsutsuki rather than straight up kill him even though he could. His ability of being able to steal and use other people's chakra leads him into stealing Mitsuki's sage mode, something Urashiki didn't even know existed, leaving him the option to use that chakra for himself if he wanted to. In a fight versus Gara and Shojiro, he reveals his trick card and changes his Byakugan into a 6 Tomoe Renegan, which is also blue. With Sasuke being the only other character with a Rinnegan remotely like it. He then doesn't join the final fight with Momoshiki and instead seemingly watches over and comments on Boruto's future. Now that sounds awesome. Am I, am I right? A never before seen take on an already legendary dojutsu? A fight versus Toneri? Sage mode? The future was so incredibly bright. And then, and then it all went wrong. And now a quick word from today's sponsor, Boxu. Boxu is a monthly snack box subscription service shipped directly from Japan straight to your door. Each box contains hand-picked assortments of snacks and candies and even tea pairings. And as I'm British, you know I love my tea. But what's great is that each box is curated around different cultural themes and seasons of Japan to ensure that you get an authentic taste. And using the cultural guide which comes with it, you can see all sorts of details such as your product's origin, ingredients, flavour and so much more. And let's see what else we've got in here. We've got yuzu sake candy, which sounds like a little bit of me. Now, I don't really know if I'm meant to like suck on these or what, but... Yo, nah, that is it, that, that's the one, that is a... These are amazing, oh my goodness. 
I think it's safe to say that next I'll have an anime binge session. Um, this box is gonna help me through it big time. So don't forget to get 10% off your own authentic Japanese snack box from Boxu and save up to $47 using my code SC10 and the link in the description. That is code SC10 for 10% off. Because not only do you get delicious snacks, it also helps support the channel. How could Urashiki possibly have been turned into a laughing stock of a villain? Well, let's find out. It actually started pretty positively. We're introduced to him again in the middle of a fight versus Gara and Sasuke where he is seemingly playing with them. He even steals Sasuke's chakra. Like, hello? He now has Sage Mode chakra and the chakra of Sasuke Uchiha? It's then revealed that he's after the one-tailed beast, Shukaku, presumably to carry on the mission that he and Momoshiki were originally sent on. After escaping a trap set by Gara, he moves on and engages in combat with Boruto and Shinki, and even uses Toneri's puppets. Something completely unexpected, but super cool to see. But the best bit was yet to come. In a fight versus Boruto, Urashiki witnesses Boruto's Jogan. A Natsutsuki other than Taneri finally saw the Jogan and lived to tell the tale. <laughs> Just where could the plot possibly go from here. So much possibility and you could just tell that the final showdown was setting up to be something legendary. Anotsutsuki who knew of the Jogan. Anotsutsuki with a unique dojutsu in the sense that he could swap his Byakugan into a Rinnegan, something we'd never seen before. Anotsutsuki with the potential to tap into Mitsuki's Sage Mode, all while also having Sasuke's Chakra available too. Oh boy, this was gonna be legendary. Or so we thought. Before we do skip ahead to that though, I do want to rewind just slightly. The seeds were being planted for Urashiki's downfall. As back during the episodes in the fight against Boruto and Shinki, Urashiki just attacked a random villager's house for no reason other than because it was fun, lol. And that was the first warning sign of what was to come. Now I want to ask you a question. What do you think is the natural, logical path for this character to take? If you ask me, it's pretty clear. It's something along the lines of seeing what Onatsutsuki, who uses Sage Mode, a power completely foreign to him, would look like. A rematch versus Sasuke, who, by the way, had spent so many damn episodes trying to track him down in the first place. Explain why he just so happens to have a Byakugan, which can at will change into a six Tomoe Rinnegan, which are blue. Explain more about the Jogan, even if it's just an inner monologue or slight mention if you really wanted to also resolve and explain the situation now with Toneri. So many amazing avenues for the next arc to explore. Well, want to know the actual path that arc took? Well, points to anyone who had put down Never use Sage Mode, never mention Teneri, never mention the Jogan again, never explain this seemingly unnatural dojutsu connection, and just turn into a power hungry for the evils villain who uses a time traveling turtle to go back to part one of Naruto to steal the nine tails off of Naruto. Honestly, it just sounds a bit like a bad fan fiction, doesn't it? I really want to know if this was the actual plan for him because it just feels so random and disconnected. This was never foreshadowed. I think they tried 
to make it seem a little bit more plausible by saying that Urashiki had the ability to rewind time a few seconds, which by the way Urashiki would have been really useful during your fight versus Gara and also Boruto. Just saying. The reason I bring up my doubt on this topic is because, not just because of how out of place it all felt, but also the fact that the animation in the arc outside of the final showdown, which even then was just a copy more or less of the final Momoshiki fight, the animation was, to be honest, way below the standards that the anime had previously set. And it was also for the anniversary of Naruto. I genuinely wonder whether any plan they actually had in place for him was scrapped just so they could do this arc for the anniversary of Naruto. And the fact that the One Tails escort arc had already began, Urushiki just sort of had to be made a part of it. Now obviously I don't know what the production's like behind the scenes and whether or not that's something that would even be possible to happen. But I did think it was interesting from, from an outsider's perspective. But get in the comment section down below and let me know what you think. What they did in this arc to this character who had so much potential is quite frankly criminal. They turned a character the fans loved, who had a fresh personality amongst the Otsutsuki, who were all previously viewed amongst the fanbase as just being evil for the sake of it. They turned him into a villain who was just evil for the sake of it. He felt like the most cookie cutter basic villain you could make. It was like a seven year old had wrote him. Never before had a character gone from being in my top two to being easily in my bottom five so easily. It's quite embarrassing really. I say it time and time again that this line right here was the greatest contribution Urashiki ever had in the Boruto series. But I think we'll end it on that note. Get in the comment section down below. Let me know what you guys think of Urushiki's character. Also, make sure you leave a like on this video if you did enjoy. And subscribe if you're not already to become a member of the Senpai Squad. We'll be having many more Boruto videos coming your way very, very soon. But until then, as always, peace.